Welcome back to another Animal of the Week. This week we're going to take a look at an entire family of moths, but before we do that, I must apologise for any background noise as there is a large storm going on outside. Bagworm moth caterpillars seem just like any other family of moths. What makes them unique enough to justify an entire episode of Animal of the Week is the way in which their caterpillars cocoon themselves. Bagworm moth caterpillars build their cocoons out of sand, small sticks and leaves. They essentially build themselves little log cabins that they carry around on them and then settle down to go through metamorphosis. Moths are insects, and speaking of insects, I'd like to show you a very cool insect-based game that is currently being developed, and needs your help to be completed. Insect Kingdom, a third-person survival game featuring highly accurate models of various insects that you'll be able to play as. This isn't a sponsorship, we just really like the look of the game and would love to see it made. At the moment, there is only one person working on this project, fueled by their passion for learning and lifelong fascination with insects, but what they've done so far is incredibly impressive. The eventual goal of this game is to create a diverse world for you to explore as your chosen insect, with engaging gameplay mechanics as well as a focus on education while also being free of microtransactions. There is a Kickstarter up at the moment, as more people need to be hired to complete the game, and I'd encourage you to go and support the project as much as you can. The world could really need some more good education oriented games created out of passion and not for money. Check out the description of this video for the links to the Kickstarter, and I really hope you'll consider helping to see this game through. Bagworm moths are found worldwide, as there are around 1300 described species. Most notably in Madagascar, they are actually bred and farmed on wattle trees because of how protein rich their pupa is. Contrastly, in South Africa and Namibia, they are seen as huge pests due to their destructive actions against the local orange orchards and other fruit farms. The habitat in which the moth is found has great effect upon the types of houses they make. The distinctiveness of local architecture in different habitats is so pronounced that it is usually easier to tell species apart by looking at what they have built rather than the moth caterpillars themselves. Obviously, tropical members of the family will be easily distinguishable from temperate ones by the type of wood and plant material used in construction. Some moths found in the Negev Desert of Israel have been found to use the feathery seeds of storkbills to make what look like wigs. Diets obviously depend massively upon where in the world the bagworm lives. However, they are all primarily herbivores, but there are well over a thousand of these, and so some have been seen to eat small arthropods. They may eat other things, but no one really has the time to check all 1300 of them, so let's leave it at that. They eat small amounts of vegetation, tree bark, foliage, and even fruit like the previously mentioned South African oranges. When first laid, the larvae are usually deposited straight onto a suitable plant for the larvae to eat, just how flies lay their eggs in rotten meat. It helps to provide an easy and instant meal for their young. This is all what the females and the larvae eat, however, as most males don't eat anything at all. This is because they have such short lifespans, only living long enough to mate and then die, so no food is really needed. I suppose it's a good motivation to find a mate quickly before they starve to death. Breeding is quite straightforward. The male fertilizes the female, the female then lays over a thousand eggs on a host plant. The eggs hatch into larvae and then they begin to devour the host plant, most of the time killing the whole thing in the process. The larvae then go on to the pupa stage where they build their amazingly shaped cocoons out of material. When the males then mature into adults, they will abandon their houses and fly off in search of a mate before they die. The females generally stay in their little houses for the rest of their lives, as they only have vestigial wings and rely on the mates to find them. The use of long-lasting cocoons provides many benefits to the bagworm moths. It gives longer-lasting protection to the females, who otherwise would have very few ways of defending themselves with no real wings. The cocoons are also much tougher when made out of bark and sticks, giving the pupa inside better chances of survival. The materials used are always locally sourced, and so blend in well to their environment, camouflaging the bagworms from any potential predators. Most bagworm moths are considered pests by just about every farmer in the world. The larvae can decimate host plants and damage crops. Threats to the insects themselves include pesticides, insecticides, birds, spiders, anything big enough and fast enough to catch them really. Even humans have been known to eat them. But don't worry, the vast amounts of them and vast number of species means they won't die out anytime soon. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.